This chart isn't of the pandemic crash or the 2008 financial crisis. It's a chart from 2000 when the bubble burst in US financial markets. Yes, it's the dot com bubble crash. The burst was so brutal that the Nasdaq Composite Index went from 5,100 US dollars to 1,100 dollars, wiping out all the gains it had made over the years. But why did this happen? And how did this happen? You will find all answers in this video. So make sure you stick around till the end. Hello guys, this is Shweta and welcome to the world of Wall Street Mojo. What was the dot-com bubble? In the 90s, the internet started becoming accessible to the world and there was a lot of buzz around it everywhere. By the mid-90s, many internet companies came up and things looked pretty good. The world was so excited about the internet that until the end of the 90s, the valuation of these internet companies had shot up by 400%. Just look at this chart of the Nasdaq Composite Index. The Nasdaq Composite Index tracks the overall market and mostly consists of technology stocks. Its price went from mere $320 to $5,100 in just a decade. But then something happened in 2001 that all these companies whose futures were looking bright had their share prices crashed by almost 80%. The crash was so bad that many companies never survived and the US economy was greatly hit. Why did the bubble burst? So, with the prices going up and up year after year, a sort of bubble was created and the internet companies were at the center of it. Eventually, the overly inflated prices had to come all the way down and the bubble had to burst. Here is exactly why all of it happened. Starting up craze. The internet was a very new thing back then and had so much potential that everyone wanted to get in on. Companies were set up one after the other, which is where the problem began. Most internet companies weren't even good businesses and were set up just based on ambitious ideas. They did not have a well-thought business plan or good cash flow generation. This was bound to fall one day or another. Number 2. Herd Mentality Herd mentality is basically people following others without giving it a proper thought. There were so many internet companies being set up, people were funding it and looking at this, even more people started putting money into it. Speculation on the internet companies began in the stock markets. Investors went on investing sprees, putting big money into companies that literally had no viable future. No one was analyzing the fundamentals of the companies at that time and were just following the media hype that made everything look very positive and promising. Number 3. Alan Greenspan speech. On December 5th, 1996, Alan Greenspan, the then chairman of the US Federal Reserve, gave a speech. In the speech, he warned that this internet hype was creating a bubble as people were putting their money on the line without thinking of the risks they were exposing themselves to. At that time, the speech might have seemed just another speech given by a person in power. But after the crash, this speech was considered to be one of the catalysts of the crash. Number 4. Taxpayers Relief Act 1997 Today, we have tax laws in place that makes us pay taxes on any profits we earn in the financial markets and this type of tax is called as capital tax. Back in the day, the Taxpayers Relief Act was introduced which reduced people's tax liabilities. I'm sure this was done to give the people a bit of a break from taxes and allow them to use the money saved on taxes in the right place. But you know what people did at that time? Most of them fell for the herd mentality and put their extra money into internet companies. The crash. It took 10 years for the price of the Nasdaq Composite Index to go from $300 to $5100. But it only took two years to crash from $5,000 to $1,100. I have zoomed out the chart just to show you that the price went back to $5,100 in only 2016. Just to put it in perspective, it took the price more than a decade to reach the peak of the dot-com crash. Aftermath During the bull trend, the valuation of almost every company was just soaring through the roof. Amazon, for example, its share were worth $5 in 1997. 
By the end of 1998, the shares were trading at almost $100. But this eventually crashed in 2001 when the share was trading at $6. After the crash, many companies went bust. These were mainly those companies that weren't built on proper business structure and planning. Even the companies that were built on good foundation were shaken after the crash. Intel is an example of one such company. Its share price dropped from $70 to $20 during the crash, even though its business was quite healthy. The dot-com crash even caused a mild recession in the US at that time. How can you avoid getting crashed? We recently had the pandemic crash in early 2020, where the price of almost every financial asset was failing daily. This did create a sentiment of panic and if you were afraid of being caught in the crash, then you weren't alone. There are two things that you can do to save yourself from such a bloodbath. Number 1. Accept negative outcomes No matter how good your analysis is or how good you are at stock picking, when the overall market is down, your portfolio will also go down. But if you have put in the work to pick out and invest in quality stocks, then your losses won't be very big. Losses are part of the game and you must embrace them. Most importantly, it shouldn't discourage you from investing. During the crash, many quality companies were available at a discount. Even Warren Buffet invested billions during the crash and is set to make much more in the long term. Number 2. Don't fall for the hype Like the internet company's hype, recently we experienced the cryptocurrency hype. Many people fell for this and invested money without knowing the ins and outs of what they are investing in. This is a perfect recipe for disaster. And the dot-com bubble is a real-life example. We even saw the same thing happening with cryptocurrencies too. Initially, some people became millionaires from the crypto bull run. But when the prices dropped, it dropped so big that it even wiped out people's investments. So this was all about market crashes and the dot-com bubble in particular. Hope you find this video useful. Please do like and share. If you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos, do share in the comment section. We come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. So subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below and get a notification when we release new videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.